In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a wooden tip over jig for your F-Body Camaro. Stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Dan and you're watching RestoCar, your source for DIY content to help you finish those builds. And hey, if you're a weekend warrior restoring a car at home, consider subscribing because this channel's for you. All right guys, so uh, before we go back in time and talk about how to build one of these wooden tip over jigs, we're gonna talk about where the best place is to secure them to the car to make sure that you don't lose your car after you uh, tip it up over. So uh, whether you're using a metal rotisserie or you're making a wooden tip over jig like I am here, most likely you're going to be attaching to the front body mounts areas this is where the front subframe mounts attach to the car and these would be where your front body bushings are at as well so uh, if we're looking here at a subframe for perspective uh, here's the rear body mount bushings and then the front body mount bushings and that's exactly where you want to put this piece this is where you're going to get the most strength and stability for uh, doing something like this again this applies to metal rotisseries and also uh, the wooden tip over jig so moving to the rear of the car you got two options one's better than the other but they both work my preference would be to mount directly to the leaf spring area here where the, this is where the leaf spring attaches to the car you put your bushings in there and bolt through and you get a nice attachment and on metal rotisseries what you're going to get is a bracket that comes down and then you're going to have an arm that goes out and it's going to go back up and attach to the rotisserie i would not feel comfortable in any way shape or form making something like that out of wood it would never hold the weight i'm sure you can come up with something using some metal plus wood whatever but just not comfortable with that at all using wood so for me that's not an option here if i were using a rotisserie this is exactly where i'd want to attach the rotisserie to the car so for the wooden tip over jig you know, because we don't want to make that arm that goes under the car and up out of wood. The next best place for us is going to be where the rear bumper attaches to the car. And this kind of goes for any car. If you've got a bumper mounting position that also attaches to the frame rail, it's a candidate for this. So if we take a look inside the car, so right here is sort of the rear tail lights of this Camaro. And then you can see this bracket here. And I've already replaced a lot of this metal in here at one point in time. It was just kind of rusted around the bracket. You want to make sure you take care of all that. You want to make sure you got a nice strong joint here. So uh, basically this bracket is spot welded to the trunk pan plus the frame rail. So it's going to be a nice secure location to attach the wooden tip over jig to. So you can see the bolts coming through right there and they're nice and tight. So with this wooden tip over jig, you just wanna make sure you get everything really nice and tight. Don't leave anything loose. All that compression is gonna help keep everything nice and snug. All right, now that you guys know how to safely attach your car to a wooden tip over jig or a metal rotisserie, we're gonna go back in time and we're gonna start work on the rear wooden tip over jig. Once that's complete, we'll move to the front wooden tip over jig and then towards the end of the video, we'll flip the car over. Hope you enjoy the video. As always, put any questions or comments down below and I'll get back to you. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and make the standoffs here. And basically that's gonna allow us to come out past these body lines and these corners over here. So to do that, we're gonna cut some pieces two and a half inches by six. Here's a scrap piece that I made already. Basically we got two and a half inches this way and just sort of 45 that to get up above this body line here. And the reason instead of just cutting it down to two and a half is that you can see that, you know, we want a little more material on this top hole up here. So if we, by 45ing it, we get a lot more material up here. So it kind of just sits like that. And then the two by six will sit on that. So let's go ahead and make those. All right, guys, so we got the standoffs marked off. We got six inches here and here. This is where we're gonna cut our 45 with the circular saw. And then uh, you wanna make sure you're using a little bit of longer piece of lumber so you can kind of make these cuts. So let's go ahead and do that. All right guys, so I made this piece 84 inches in the back of the vehicle. This is the two by six that's gonna kind of run across where the bumper would go. All right, so next we're gonna go ahead and put these standoffs onto this two by six. Uh, to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and measure center behind the car here. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is measure from the center of those holes to the center of those holes and then transfer that over to the two by six and just put some screws in for now to hold them. And then later we'll come back and drill those through and put some bolts through there. All right guys, so we got the measurements transferred over to our two by six. So here's the center of the board and then 22 and three quarters this way marks the center for the standoff. Same thing over here, 
22 and three quarters from the center marks the center for the standoff and then for my car my measurements coming up an inch and a quarter and we're going to put a, go ahead and put a screw in right here and just hold this in place and then we'll drill through All right, guys. So things don't always go as planned. Uh, basically, on the car, it's kind of a it comes out a little bit. So I need to take about an inch and a half off of here. But instead of taking the whole piece off and making this thinner, I'm just going to hit this with a circular saw a few times. Uh, just shim away probably a quarter inch on both sides. Right here is what I'm hitting. Is this here? So then it's making this piece come out and leaving a gap on this side. So again, I just want to shave a little bit off of this side of the standout piece, and then uh, we should be good to go. All right guys, so we got the piece clamped in and we're gonna do one hole on this side, get the bolt in. And then what we'll do is we'll come and do one over here. Once we have those two in, then we'll come back and do the bottom two bolts. And then we'll be good here and we can start building the, the legs and the, the radius piece. So uh, here's a look at these standoffs in here. You can kind of see, hopefully you can see that. Here's the angle we cut and it's kind of touching up against this a little bit. But right now this whole board's a little angled just because the clamps I have so it'll straighten out. That's why I want to do one bolt at a time. So we're going to go ahead and mark the hole from the back here. Again, just we're going to do the top one for now. Then once we get a bolt in there, we can get rid of this clamp and hopefully straighten this out a little bit. And then we'll do the other bolt over on this side. All right, guys, first bolts in. It's just kind of hand tightened right now. We didn't tighten it down the whole way. You can see over here, got some big washers in between there as well. So now on this side, we got the distance from here to this quarter panel the same as this one over here and what we're going to go ahead and do now which i've already done is mark the hole back here we're going to take it off and drill it all right guys we got two of the four bolts in these are hand tightened right now and i'm going to go ahead and mark the other two holes and drill them out at the same time and then we will be good to go with this all right guys so we got two bolts on each side so here's a quick look at the different types of hardware we're using for this project I've already used some, I'm coming back late recording this, kind of forgot about it, but uh, basically uh, for this project, I'm using 12 five inch by one half inch bolts to go through most of the material. These are all galvanized. You don't need galvanized. I don't know why I bought galvanized. It's just the first thing I saw, I guess. And then over here, we got some eight inch bolts to go through the four by four posts, plus the material that has to attach to it. Up here, we got steel mending plates. I use these on the back of the pieces so that uh, I have room back there because I kept everything kind of tight and close to the car. You could use plywood if you have it laying around or whatever. I use the scrap plywood left over on the front of the jigs that I made. So, you know, you can substitute anything out. And then right here, uh, I have some longer body mount bushings. These will, these are five inch bolts and they will go through the four by four post pretty easily. And here's a comparison of what the original one looks like. So, so now we're ready to do the legs and then the piece of plywood for the radius. Uh, what I've done so far is marked uh, two feet from the end on both sides because that's where the legs are going to go. And I'm building this so that if I wanted to move the plywood from this side, to that side, I could easily do that, or just essentially add plywood to both sides. And, you know, I don't have to move it, I could just add more. So we're gonna do a leg there and a leg there. We need two pieces, 24 and a half inches long. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut those now, and then we'll move on to the plywood. All right, a quick overview of what we just did there. So uh, basically I'm doing a two foot radius. So measured up two feet over here. This is a four foot by four foot piece of plywood. You can get them two foot by four foot or you can get a full sheet and cut it in half, whatever you wanna do. So we got a two foot radius here. And to do that, put a nail in the center and then tie off a piece of string or metal wire. Like I had in my case, I couldn't find any string. And then you just basically start on one end and take it and it creates a nice, radius for you if you're wondering why 
I couldn't just get two by two squares of plywood. That's because uh, the rear of the car is going to be sitting 30 inches. So it's all right. We're just going to have some extra length here to help support the car. I'm not going to cut that off. I might cut it at a diagonal or whatever, but we'll see how that goes whenever I run my cross brace. So anyway, this would be one side. So we're going to go ahead and cut this right up the middle. All right, guys, even though wheel cribs also make excellent saw horses, just not high enough. So jumped over the auto body stand for now. The next step is to take the jigsaw and then cut out the radius. So we're going to go ahead and do that. All right, guys, so now we got the piece back off the car. This is going to be the 30 inch leg side and this is the 24 and a half inch leg side and on the other side of this would be the plywood so these are these mending plates and you can use plywood if you don't have those you can just uh, cut a scrap of plywood and you know anchor it back here but basically these have these teeth on the bottom and you know you just hammer them in and they help i mean on this side the, the plywood's really going to hold all this stuff uh, over here, if I was going to stick with the original plan of putting a leg here, I'd either want to use those plates or plywood to kind of hold that in place. So let's go ahead and nail this in and then flip it over and put the plywood on the other side. All right guys, quick look. So over there's the leg, come over here. This is where the tipping action's gonna happen. And then we see we put a 45 brace there. That's about three feet long. And then this is a four foot piece here. It gives the car a nice base to sit on. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over now and put some screws in that plywood there to give some extra strength to that. All right, so we got some screws in here. So you can cut that off if you need some extra plywood. I'm gonna cut up some of this extra that was over on this side when we made that radius right now. So over here, just did a three and a half inch strip and we're gonna start using that for mending plates on the front uh, just because I'm running low, I didn't get enough of them. So, all right guys, so we're good over here. We got the plywood used to tie that stuff together. It's not going anywhere. Quick update over here, I changed my mind. I moved the leg from being screwed to the front of this to supporting it from underneath and then again, just took some plywood scraps there and uh, tied that together. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a, a brace this way as well because I don't have plywood like I do on that side. But doing this will, will also allow me to switch or, or add plywood to this side and flip the car the other way. But the main reason I did this was because, you know, when, the, when this car is sitting on these legs and it's not tilted over, I want the weight to come from this to transfer to this to the ground, right? Whereas the way I had it, yeah, it probably would have been fine, but you know, with the extra weight, I was worried about stuff here breaking apart or anything like that. So do it that way. I'm gonna flip it over and uh, use my, use a mending plate on the other side, and then we'll put a two foot cross piece in here or something. So anyway, let's get back to it. All right, guys, the rear piece is done and ready to be installed. So you can kind of see what I did there. Got the plywood bracing going on. Got our pivot point here. Over here, we put the leg under the main two by six and then use some leftover plywood from cutting this up and that cut some off of there too, uh, to use for this. Let me flip it over and show you the back real quick. All right, and here is a look at the back side of this. So this is the side that's gonna be bolted or touching, I guess, the tail panel. There's those standoffs we saw earlier. And you can see here, same thing, bracing on both sides. So let's go ahead and get it installed. All right, guys, the rear is on. It's time to move to the front. And you wanna make sure you tighten those up nice and tight because all the pressure together is gonna keep this thing from uh, 
uh, moving. So, all right guys, so now we're just gonna go ahead and make one of these for the front of the car, exact same measurements. And the reason for that is that even though the front sits lower is we are going to kind of come out from under where the subframe bushings are and then up and then we'll bolt that whole piece to the, the area where we come up. And I can't do this piece right now because I don't have long enough body bushings to go through the two by fours to where I feel comfortable with them. So we're just gonna go ahead and work on the piece. It's gonna get bolted up to it. And then tomorrow I'll stop by and get uh, the bolts that I need. All right guys, so that's, you can kind of see what it's gonna look like. So tomorrow I gotta to get the longer body mount bushing bolts and make the piece for the middle. And then we'll go ahead and attach this to that. And we'll be ready to flip this thing over. So it's looking good. A lot easier second time once you get it figured out. So stay tuned. Time to clean up, get ready for another day. All right guys, it's another day. Picked up a four x four post. I feel better with that than the two two x fours uh, screwed together. Basically, we're going to use that to go from body mount to body mount underneath, and then we're gonna come out and go up and attach to this piece here. So we'll go ahead and get this out of the way here in a minute and get this piece cut. I also picked up some longer body mount bolts. These are 5.8-11, so we got five inches now. We'll be able to get through the four x four post pretty easily. Picked up some more of these mending plates, steel mending plates for the uh, back of the piece we made the other day. All right guys, so we're gonna go ahead and get this out of the way and we're going to cut the four x four posts to fit across from the body mount locations. All right guys, so we've got the four x four set up, ready to mark out and cut. I need this to be 47 inches long and then the bolts are 42 inches on center. So uh, we'll go ahead and get all that marked out, get it cut and get the uh, holes drilled for the bolts. All right guys, so we got the piece cut down to 47 inches and then from center to center on the bolts, we got 42 inches. So I came in two and a half inches this way on both sides and then split the difference here. It's about an inch and three quarters. The four by four is not exactly three and a half. Same thing over here. So now what we're gonna go ahead and do is drill a uh, three quarter inch hole through here. That'll give us a little bit of play if we need it with the five eighths bolt. All right, we got both holes drilled out. So we're gonna go ahead and install this on the car. All right, we got the piece installed and now we're ready to attach that to this. So we'll get into that in a minute, kind of check out why you need longer bolts here to go through the four x four and then into the uh, subframe mount cage nuts there. So looking good, nice and sturdy. That ain't going anywhere. All right guys, so now we got to cut the pieces that are going to go up that will allow us to mount to that. So these are going to be 18 inches for me. Uh, if you recall, the height of that's 30 inches and the way the car's sitting and everything, 18 inches will get me up high enough. And it leaves me about like a two inch overhang down here to give me some more meat, you know, left over after I put some bolts through here. So that'll help reduce any kind of splitting or anything like that. I don't foresee it to split, but extra precaution. So basically what we're gonna end up with is something like that but we're going to use a two by six for that so you can see a little bit of overhang it's going to come up we're going to put some bolts through there and then we will mount that 
to the front of these. We're gonna do 32 inches from end to end of these vertical pieces here, so let's do it. All right guys, so we got these pieces just held in by two screws right now. You can see where the bolts are gonna go through. So good here. So now I gotta go ahead and put all those mending plates on the back side of this and I gotta adjust one on the front so that it's not in the way whenever we go ahead and bolt that to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those on and drill the holes so they're ready and we'll be ready to attach this to the car. All right guys, so now we're gonna go ahead and drill the holes that will then connect to the pieces, the vertical pieces that we put off the four by four post. So uh, I gotta remove this piece here because it's in the way and we'll figure, we'll put something else back once we get there. But uh, for now, we're gonna go ahead and mark this out and drill the holes. All right, guys, we gotta make a small change here. I need to add a spacer to the front of the four x four. Uh, this all worked fine, everything, no issues, but the inner fender mount down there is causing problems. So I can't get this piece mounted, sticking out a little further. And I was gonna work around it over here. I knew this part, uh, but there's not a lot of space for bolts around here. I was just gonna cut the back of the bolts off I had to. Uh, basically, I'll just go ahead and unscrew those, put a spacer in between and put them back. So, and then that'll give us enough room, an extra two by should be fine in there. So go ahead and get that done. All right, so we got the spacer in there. See from the side here, it's just held in with screws right now. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and drill through the rest of the way there, put the eight inch bolts in place. All right guys, so we got the bolts in, hand tight right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten those up. All right, so the bolts are tight. We're gonna go ahead and Move this piece over, get it lined up, and drill through it, put the bolts in. All right, we've got the piece clamped in, so now what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and put the bolts in the bottom two holes, remove the clamps, and then do the other two holes. All right, guys, we got her, it's all put together. I'm going to make like an L out of, the, uh, out of some scrap two by four, and just build this up a little more in here. It's a little uh, too flexible for my liking. Uh, definitely think it'd be fine, but I don't want to find out. So just basically gonna screw two pieces together and that allowed me to attach some more to this plus these. And then I think we'll be pretty good. So let's go ahead and do that. And then I think we can call this done. All right, guys, we're ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove all the jack stands and the wheel cribs. I added one more brace right across there. Didn't really do much as far as stability goes and everything, but I think it'll help a good bit. So we're ready to flip this thing over, just clearing out some space. Should this wheel right over? Okay. Huh? Let's have your new books. Okay, what? That's 
Yeah. If anything, I'd be different as Bruce. He's on a little better because I've helped him. Yeah, they're not sitting on it. So it's not going to be good. Oh, the weight on these things. Yeah. Yep. That's great. All right, guys. It is up on its side and I am pumped because I don't have to be laying on my back to get this stuff cleaned up. So check that out. That's awesome. Overall, it's pretty sturdy. I don't have any concerns. It's a little heavier to, to like get started than I thought it would be, but uh, I guess that's to be expected. So, but yeah, a little hesitation rolling it over for the first time because I've never done it, but uh, it worked out really good. Overall, I'm pretty excited. So here's a look at this side again. It's kind of, you can see now how it, you know, rolls over. I just put a block of wood right there so that in case kids or something come out, you know, they can't tip it back over, but uh, it'd be pretty hard for them to do anyway. It's uh, once it's, once it sets over on the side, it's uh, pretty much there. So here's a look at the, the back side. Kind of see, so basically all the weight is going to come down and then get pushed that way. You can see here how that's all braced up. And then the same thing over on this side, we're gonna have all this weight come down. It's gonna transfer over to that and down to the ground. So pretty cool. I am super excited. This is gonna make life so much easier. All right guys, so in the next video, we're probably gonna just start cleaning this stuff up. It'll be more of a progress update than really a how-to. It gets pretty boring watching, you know, me clean all this stuff up and strip paints but it has to be done so we're gonna get it done get some epoxy primer on it and then find something to spray over that with some bed line or something who knows so we'll see you in the next one